Oh, you guys aren't gonna get me. I can tell by the looks right now. <laughs> this guy went, what the fuck? I'm weird, dude. <laughs> I'm not from here, dude. I'm from LA, dude. I don't fit in here. I can already tell, dude. I see the people just staring at me from the plus 15. He's going, what the fuck? Because I'm the only guy outside. I look like a homeless guy. <laughs> I didn't know what they were. I didn't know what they were. I'm like, what is this tunnel system? <laughs> I just came to the, who is this guy? <laughs> Staring at me, dude. I see him mouthing something. <laughs> I'm like, what? The guy's like, sorry. <laughs> you guys are too nice. Too, too nice. Canadians are too nice. Passive aggressive. <laughs> Passive aggressive, please. Act nice. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Are you fucking mad or not, motherfucker? <laughs> you don't do that shit, dude. So intense. It'll get fun. So crazy. It's good here, dude. We just got in. I had to stop over in Va Vancouver. That shit was scary, dude. We had to stop. And then <laughs> the flight attendant gets on and goes, Oh, thank you guys for flying with us at Air Canada. We're just about to land and... Uh, if you or if any family members have traveled to China in the last 15 days, please uh, check in. And I'm like, you're just asking them now? I've been on this tube with these people for two and a half hours. Dude, I had the fucking air on. In this little disease tube. You didn't ask them before we got on? These chicken and all you have to do, and then they would just ask, they go, Have you been to China? And you go, No. They go, Okay, cool. I'm like, That's it? <laughs> no further screening? <laughs> Coronavirus. <laughs> you don't want to catch that. <laughs> Sounds like we're from the coronavirus. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. And they're scaring us. I guess, I guess the swine flu hit us way harder than this one. But this one just sounds scary. Like, do you want to catch coronavirus? I don't know. Can, can I get it too? You know, you know that face you do? Like you can't control when, you're, when your face muscles do that? You're fucked. When you're trying to lie. Did you take the cookies? I didn't touch them. You gotta learn that early too. As a man, you gotta learn that voice early because you can't do anything. That's just, it's just your nerves are taking over. Your legs get wobbly, you know what I mean? You've all had it. You know, you wanna get it early as a man though. You have to get it early as a man because you gotta learn how to control it. You don't wanna get later on with your buddies. You're like in college and they leave you and you go, you guys didn't fucking wait for me, man. <laughs> you sound like a little bitch. But that's just God, God's way of saying you're gonna be a little bitch right now. Like that voice is just like tells you like that's what's gonna happen. It doesn't matter how big you are, either big guys can get it too. I've seen it, dude. I saw two guys about to fight. One guy caught the voice. He's like, I'm gonna fucking fuck you up, dude. I'm like, no, you're not. You're not gonna do nothing to that man with that voice, dude. There's not a chance in him. That, like someone like translated, they said, that's not a chance in hell. There is not a chance in hell. I, said, I like to abbreviate. If you can't keep along, that's on you. I like to talk fast, fast and loud. This is dope. This is like a lens crafters commercial. <laughs> They're just like not laughing either. They're just looking at me like a fucking fish tank with no fish in it. Just going. <laughs> It'll get funnier. I'm just getting settled in. Judgy ass crowd by your face. Loosen up. It's gonna be okay. I've done this for three weeks. I got this. <laughs> Do you remember when we were kids and that's how you treat <laughs> When you were kids, when we were all kids, you'd play so hard in the playground. Do you remember that? You'd play so hard in the playground and then you'd run over to the water fountain and you'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> You don't remember? I'm not the only one that drank water like that. You did it too, dude, back in the 70s. One, two, three, water hog. Come on, Kevin, stop. Save some for the fish, Kevin. You don't remember that? 
I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Some people are starting to come along. That's a good laugh. <laughs> Let it out, bro. These motherfuckers are laughing like they're on a limited laugh plan. Like, it's so hard to make them laugh. I haven't heard the bald guy just sitting there, the, shine, the light's shining in my eye. He's sitting right here just going, bang. I'm going, oh, how am I going to get through one hour of this? Audible laughter is fun for me. Makes the show better. Loose, bro. Have fun. Life's too short enough to have fun. This section's awesome. I always want to be fun. Everything in my body tells me, turn this way. I'm a needy performer. I don't know, dude, last time I was here, this is my first time playing Yuck Yuck, so it's been a lot of fun too. This is a great club. The way they do it, it's very nice. The um, guys that run it, mm, hey, buddy. <laughs> you know, you, just, you can't trust somebody, you know? Like, hey, hey, what's up? Hey, I'm here to pick you up. I go, are you? <laughs> This guy, Scott and Dale, they're just the worst. I'm kidding, they're in the back. <laughs> they're in the back, get in the van. Whoa, shit, you got really creepy on that. <laughs> Guys, I think we found who we were looking for. <laughs> this show was an amber alert. He helped you bury the body. You can't look like that and not help somebody bury the body. <laughs> She's all chopped wood, too. There's like, there's no wood that needs to be chopped, man. <laughs> what do you mean you'll chop the wood? Just dig the hole and we'll get out of here. <laughs> There's no chop wood. I, I said I, I can do it if we need to. <laughs> Good sport, brother. Good sport. What is your name? Dean. Dean and Dean and Juan. Oh, nice, dude. I did not see that coming. Unless you're messing around. There's not, dude. That's bullshit, dude. Jr. got here. The Mexican population went up 100 percent. Is it really Juan? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Registered sex offender. <laughs> New Jersey. He's not joking, dude. Lara, oh my God, dude, that's a very Latino. It's Juan G. Laracuantes. Come here, dale, let's you, dale, let me go, you know. And I think it's important for the United States and Mexico to, to work together to live in Canada. <laughs> It says all that on his ID. Juan, God bless you. Thank you for making it up here. It's really high north. It's really high north. Thank you guys for being here, man. Juan, I'm sorry, I forgot again. Dean Juan. Okay, pleasure. Thank you guys for being here. Put up. And I know this is Middle Eastern. I know my people when I see that. I have two people, one eyebrow. I know. I know people, dude. These are my fans, bro. This is, I could say that I'm Middle Eastern, dude. I know the ratio. Thank you guys for coming to Look, this is the most Persian shit ever. He's got tea. They don't even know the stereotype, dude. Tea! Look at, look at, Aladdin's going up. Ooh. Ooh. Like, Grandpa's three wishes, please get the white people away from us. A lot of white people, see how the laughter got weird? Look at how you, you're in our fucking town, bitch. Don't talk bad about us, huh? We're good, hard-working people. These two guys are brutal, dude. Still mad about the Flames game? I don't know. It wasn't my fault, guys. I thought you'd be a friendly face. You got a Dodger LA hat on and you haven't smiled once at me. <laughs> If that wasn't the cutest thing I've ever heard an audience member say, he said, and he, just, he, he was so fucked up because the first word got caught here. He's ah, goes giggle, and like, I was giggling a little, literally, and I ate a little, literally. That's the pleasure of the meat show. I'm glad you came to Clark Rivers of the Earth. Or decent people and all me and my friend will bet you five bucks. Those guys like that always want to bet you for nothing. You all bet you five bucks. You can't throw this bottle in that trash can without hitting the wall. You probably can't even hit the trash can without hitting the wall. I'll bet you five dollars. 
It's fun, right? Just have fun. It'll be fun. This job is great. You can do anything. It's comedy. You know, you just talk however you want. To. <laughs> There's no HR department. <laughs> I'll try to do that at work. They'll be like, Dean, get the fuck back to your desk. <laughs> You're scaring everybody by the water cooler. Did you just, did you just air grab your crotch? <laughs> do you think this is a thing you're a comedian? <laughs> Last time I was in Calgary, I had to drive. Uh, <laughs> I flew in here and then I had to drive to Edmonton. Oh, dude, this is... Now, this is what's crazy to me, is if I say Edmonton, you guys go... Bleh, 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 bleh. Literally, they're two and a half hours, two hours away from me. They're the same people, I don't get them. Well, you guys get heated, so I don't like you, pal. Don't you dare say we're the same as Edmonton. To me, and I don't mean to be offensive, dude, I get it, you guys have a rivalry, but I didn't understand that, dude. So I flew in and I had to drive up. I thought it was way closer. There's nothing close. <laughs> it looked closer on a map. I was like, I'm just flying to Calgary, shoot on up. <laughs> didn't know the rules. Dude, I got a rental car, probably biggest mistake of my life. As soon as I got the rental car, I, didn't, I wasn't even two minutes out of the rental car lot that I get pulled over. Two minutes. I drive out, I missed my freaking turn. I had to get on uh, whatever, Elizabeth Highway, the, Queen, the Queen's Highway. I don't know, whatever royal road. Queen Elizabeth's fancy road or whatever. I had to get on that, I missed it. I missed it, so what do you do when you miss your turn? You gotta make a U-turn. No, 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 Alberta. No, no, Alberta, you don't. I didn't know that, because my navigation said, make a U-turn. <laughs> so what do you do when your navigation tells you make a U-turn? Come make a U-turn. Come make a U-turn. Make the U-turn. So I made the U-turn. Not even halfway through the wheel turn, dude. Not even half. <laughs> Guy pulls me over right away, dude. Oh my God, this is not starting. This is not starting well. <laughs> And he comes, couldn't be more Canadian, the dude walks up. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> she opens with an apology, I loved it. He was very sweet, I'm sorry, sorry. I go, oh no, no worries. <laughs> and I'm trying to be cool, I don't know what the laws are. My hands are up here, because in the States, they went, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, It already looked weird. And she's like, hey. Uh, you know why I pulled you over? And I go, not a clue. <laughs> he goes, you know, you made a U-turn at that light there. I was like, oh yeah, uh, yeah, you can't make a U-turn. He goes, no, not in this province. <laughs> I was like, really? And he goes, yeah, we all kind of know where we're going. <laughs> I don't, I don't, he doesn't know what I do for a living. I gotta laugh now at his shitty joke. I go, because <laughs> I'm trying to get out of a ticket. So, oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't know. I, you know, my, my and then I go. My my navigation said to make a U-turn, and then he goes, "Well, if your navigation told you to drive off a bridge, would you?" <laughs> There's a bridge. If it's a bridge, no way. I would have never do that. <laughs> he goes, so where are you headed? And I go, Edmonton. <laughs> Swear to God, he goes, boo. <laughs> I didn't know the rival here was that team. He said, boo. And then I'm like, oh my God. And he goes, well, okay, where are you from? And I get my ID out and I go, and he goes, oh, LA. Okay. Would you come for the weather? <laughs> He's killing in my car. 
I mean, I'm putting on the works, bro. I'm trying to get out of this sucker. <laughs> well, I get it, because it's warmer there than it is here. I have to re-explain his joke so he knows I'm Because you can't go too hard on laughter. You gotta know, let him know you know what you're doing. So I explained it. And uh, he goes, yeah, man, you can't, you know, you can't do the U-turns and stuff here. I was like, okay, I was not aware of that. He's like, hey, it's okay. I'm gonna let you go ahead and be on your way. But before I do, I'm gonna give you a little souvenir. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, cool, this guy's gonna let me off. <laughs> and then he gave me a ticket. <laughs> the souvenir was the ticket. I thought he was gonna give me, I'm like, dude, Canadians are nice. He's gonna give me like a bottle of maple syrup and we'll be on my way. <laughs> and he came back with a ticket. But he was super cool. The guy was very nice. He, he actually did, like, went off the record and, like, covered his little, I guess they have a body cam or something, and he covered it up and, like, turned some knob off. He goes, hey, man, look, I got a, I got a boss that really you know, wants me to give these tickets out and stuff like that. I know it's pretty petty, but if you don't plan on getting a license in Alberta, then you don't have to pay this thing. <laughs> so, oh, thanks for that. Thanks for that info. And I guess we'll see if I pay now. <laughs> so I'm kind of here like a little outlaw. I haven't paid. Back off, motherfuckers, I haven't paid. Any cops in the house? Dude, the show's good. These guys are the best, dude. You guys look like you're waiting for breadsticks at Olive Garden. I don't know. They haven't laughed once. I don't know what he's waiting for. Give him a fucking little bit of heroin, dude. He's... If you look, dude, the iguana on a heated rock. <laughs> this is in case there's any Calgary police officers here. I got nothing for you. <laughs> this guy's good energy. Be like him. Be like him. That's one thing I noticed too when you like make like make jokes into the audience in Canada, people go. Oh, oh. You guys aren't as like mean and ruthless as we are in the state, so I apologize if you feel any sort of way offended or anything like that. That's not my intention, because I want you to leave here having a good time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Those witches thought. <laughs> there was a couple. She laughed as if she was making a stew: lizard legs and, and cow nuts and dibble dicks, <laughs> whatever they put in those stews. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I am mute! Hell yeah, dude. This guy's watched Harry Potter once or five times. Now it's getting weird in here. I'm not gonna lie. What a great town, though, man. Calgary is a lot of fun. It is. Very cool, man. It sounded like an IMAX movie, didn't it? You know when they do the test? I ran out of material five minutes ago, guys. Long show. <laughs> it looks so much easier on TV. I was like, sure, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> Watching TV, I didn't do shit all day, so it's like a little, it takes me a minute. This is my favorite part of the day, by the way. This is all I look forward to doing. And uh, I was just in the hotel room watching TV, your TV here. Incredible. I watched a whole program on horse trainers. <laughs> One hour, watch the whole thing. <laughs> By the way, all you have to do to train a horse, I don't know if you guys know this. Come on now, here, come on, here, home. Horse will do it. Horse will do whatever you want it to, bro. Come on now, here, home, jump over a fence. Come on now, here, home, jump over a whole lake if you want it to. You want the horse to stop? Guess what? Home, here, it's all the same time. I was like, is there something we don't know? It was like mind control. I'm like, how's he controlling the horse like that? It was tripping me out, dude. I was like, there's gotta be something we don't know, man. I had a burger today, that was good. You guys have good beef in Alberta. Good beef, man. Yeah, I, uh, I, had, uh, I had the burger, it was a good burger, man. And I ordered the burger and the guy goes, you want a side with that? And I go, yeah. Do you guys have sweet potato fries? And he goes, no. And then I just go, come on now, here, come on here. <laughs> <laughs> Still didn't have no sweet potato fries. <laughs> that shit only works on horses. <laughs> but how you gonna know unless you try? <laughs> Gotta try. You have to try.
your TV is crazy. I was watching the news. That shit scared me. Because the news here, the news in Canada talks to you like you're Canadian. I'm not from here. And the weather, the weather guy was freaking. There's a schnook coming. There's a schnook. It's coming. The schnook is here. The schnook is coming. I'm like, what the hell is a schnook? Is a schnook good or is it bad? I'm in my hotel by myself, high, freaking out. Where's the schnook? Is the schnook is coming here? What is a schnook? It sounds like some mythical creature. I don't know what it is. So I'm tripping, I'm like, dude, what? And then the guy didn't do any favors either. The weather guy said the schnook's coming through. Like, I know what it is. And then he goes, okay, the schnook is coming back to you, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, please say something about the schnook. <laughs> Where's the schnook? And then I get in the car with Scott, who runs the club. And I ask him, I go, dude, what is a schnook? And this dude, turns into like a First Nation chief. <laughs> and he goes, it's actually pronounced Chinook. It's actually an Inuit term for snow eater. It's when the cold air comes up the mountain like the breath of a lone wolf <laughs> and causes a warm breeze to shoot down the opposite side hitting the backs of our children and nourishing our fields. It's been a mild winter. The grass is high, our people are sick. Coronavirus is running rampant. Oh my God. Thank you, one person. Thank you. Yeah. There go. Oh, there. Oh, oh, you're here. Oh, you guys are here. Mary, I showed up. Good thing you guys are here. You guys have been waiting for bingo numbers all night. I'm not. What's your name, sir? Brian. Brian. Hey. Oh. <laughs> I mistimed the shit out. Of it. That was my fault because I went Brian and he had he already said his name, so he goes Yeah. <laughs> Brian, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to meet you. And this is very much a diverse front row, and I love that. I like when there's all different types of races, ethnicity. I mean, it's very white. <laughs> if it wasn't for you guys, I don't know what. Where are you guys from? Palestine. Palestine, okay. Oh, shit. And people are getting, this guy's getting more and more nervous as it goes on. Go, oh, don't say, please don't say Iraq. <laughs> That's nice, bro. But thank you guys for coming and supporting the Middle East. Um, that's where I'm from too, man. And I get I get to perform everywhere. I got to go like all over the place for stand up. You know, I got to perform in Beirut, Lebanon, which was pretty dope. I didn't think they'd get the comedy. You know, it's Lebanon. They got the comedy way more than whatever's happening. <laughs> they got the jokes <laughs> from earlier. <laughs> they got the jokes and everything. It was crazy, dude. Like in Lebanon, I didn't think like you know you just think all oh, that part of the world and you think crazy stuff about it but it was beautiful they took us these nice restaurants right on the mediterranean seafood right out of the water was so good these nightclubs i mean you could do what there's no rules they have they have no hours when do you close when everybody will go home <laughs> when do you want the money cooking drug? any drug you want dude on deck <laughs> Whatever you, want. you know what i'm saying look at these people oh, we don't do that <laughs> Fucking degenerate. Look what I do for a living. Look what I do for a living. I just want to... Same guy. I'm not a fucking accountant. I can do some Molly every now and then. Life is too short. I read a dope quote today from Rumi, this old philosopher, poet. I'm gonna try not to fuck it up. He said, uh, this place is a dream. The sleeper thinks it's real. Do you know this? Do you know this quote? No, but okay, because you're shaking your head like yes, and he's going. Whoa. <laughs> Dean was like, just stop there. <laughs> this place is a dream. The sleepers think it's real. Then death will come like dawn, and you'll wake up laughing at the things you thought. Thank <laughs> you.
Really Close. <laughs> at the things, oh, at your, whatever your problems are was the gist of it. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying though? Did you get what, you're gonna, you guys don't because you're hard working with, on the pipes. <laughs> Like you guys, it can't. If you listen to that, you'd kill yourself. Like you couldn't. You're like, why the fuck am I down here on these pipes then? Why am I drilling this oil if this ain't real? <laughs> you can't, but you can't accept that. Did you find it? I'll read it real quick. Dicks and pussies go together. <laughs> what the fuck is this? What porn hub? <laughs> this guy's pulling my leg, man. This place is a dream, only a sleeper considers it real. The d then death comes like dawn, and you wake up laughing at what you thought was your grief. And then the Lord came, I'm kidding. <laughs> this is like a sermon, basically what that's mean. What, you guys understand it or not? I'm just, it was, just blew me away today, and I was like, I need to share that with somebody, even if it didn't mean anything to you. It's like, stop taking shit so seriously. Whatever you think is so real and important, it ain't important, man. It's just like, have fun. You know, like whatever your difference are with family, whatever friends, just look, there it is, baby. That was good. That was a beautiful moment I just witnessed. I don't know if you're fucking with me or not, but it looked cool from this perspective. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. I forget what I was talking about when I got there. But... The which one? No, the roomy thing. Yeah, I just read that. But what was I? Does anybody know? What? Lebanon, dog. Somebody said Maui. Did you just shoot that what you want me to talk? Talk about Hawaii. If you don't mind, eh? It's cold here. Maybe you could talk about the nice weather there. No, man, Beirut. Beirut was insane, dude. The clubs were incredible. The nightclubs just went on. The music sucks. And I told you, I'm Middle Eastern, dude. We got the worst music in the history of music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have one song in the whole region, bro. It's just one guy going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Track two, huh? <laughs> Track seven, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. hey, man, I think I got ripped off on this album. It all kind of sounds the same. Is this the same song? How are they making this music, dude? How are they making this music? I just picture a guy like in a recording booth <laughs> and his buddy next to him with like a blowtorch. He's like, light me up, you know? <sighs> we got that one, let's do another one. Yeah! Ooh, this album is gonna hurt! <laughs> Oh. I don't know, man. It was so. They don't know how to talk shit either. They don't know how to talk basic shit in Beirut, man. And I'm a big fan of that. I'm a comedian. I love talking shit. Not a, not so much a Canadian thing to make fun of. But I make fun of everything. That's so I grew up on that, man. And I love it. If you're good at talking shit, I'll let it slide, dude. There's. I live in Hollywood. There's like this guy. <laughs> I can't, dude. This is. I'll explain this first part first. And then I'll get to the side. I jump the gun. I have ADD, bro. Sometimes I go too fast. I go, I want to tell you something, but let me not sneak that in yet. I'll get there when I get there. It's almost a spoiler alert. If you will. Spoiler alert, Dean. Spoiler alert, Dean. I'm going to tell you right now. I'll tell you. That was dope. I feel like he's my therapist and I have him at every show. When I go off track, I go out and I have to look at him and he goes, tell us to pray. I go, yeah, there, there I was. In Maui. And the surf was 10 feet high. Down in the water. This is so bad. Whatever this is, is bad, guys. How are you guys doing? You okay? It's an awkward angle for the seats, but that's all good. You having a good time, though? Yeah. Cool. Where was? First part. Okay. Oh, I'm milking that one too much. You guys stopped laughing, huh? Gave up on me already. I was doing whatever I did earlier, and all of a sudden, I took two minutes to fucking get back to my feet. And you guys are just... Let me go. <laughs>
What did I say about being sensitive performer? <laughs> Two minutes away from going back to that hotel room and proofreading that suicide letter I was working on. <laughs> I thought Calgary would be nicer. <laughs> Just today I found the 15 plus 15. <laughs> Whatever the hell that's called. Give it up for your wait staff real quick and please take care of it. I don't know how bad your Me Too laws are, but in LA, this might get you. That might get you canceled. So I just want you to know it was consensual. Wait, it was right. Yeah, Simon. Yeah, Beirut, man, the shit talking was just not right. Just wasn't right. They didn't know how to do it. I had a fight with a cab driver. I don't know if. You guys are like me, but when I get in the cab, I think immediately the guy's trying to fuck me. <laughs> He's trying to fuck me over. Immediately, you you agree with me? These guys take you the long way, and I'm 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 like, all right, they play dumb, act like you know. I put my Google Maps on. I put that shit loud with the address, <laughs> and I'll put so you can hear it, dude. Go left, go left, motherfucker, go left. <laughs> American. You guys wouldn't do that. You let them take you all the way around. Sorry, 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 can you? It's actually back there, 15 miles. You passed it. I didn't want to say anything. I'm, I'm polite. Sorry. Whatever. Yeah. See, Kalama. I haven't fucked that up, dude. God, you guys are backward here. See how it got all tightened up? Because I'm not of this race either. So that gets weird with some people. Like, And then the drinks have been flowing a little bit. And I kind of went a little harder on Calgary. Like, what the fuck is this foreigner talking about? <laughs> like that, that energy was there when I said, like in LA, like if I said that, if I was like, oh, you guys are crazy. They'd be like, oh, we are. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck you mean by that? <laughs> no, Don, you said we're fucking crazy. What do you mean by that, Paul? <laughs> Just come to our town like that and fucking talk shit about coronavirus? <laughs> we don't even have a reported case. We had Matt Cow, sure, we had Matt Cow. <laughs> that was a few years back and it fucked up our beef industry. <laughs> Why are you talking about coronavirus so loosely when you haven't done your research, Paul? <laughs> God, I love my job so much. I love my job so much. So the cab driver. I'll get to this. I do one joke through my whole act. It just takes forever. All right, so cab driver. We get in a fight, bro, because he gets pissed that I'm doing that thing. He gets so mad that I'm doing that thing and like trying to show him. And so he, this is, we got an argument. This is what he said to me. Word for word, this is what he said to me. Your mother's mouth does not have air conditioning. <laughs> Fuck me up for the whole night. I don't know. I, I was like, my mother, my mom's mouth, what? So I said, what? And then he goes, I'm sorry, my English no good. Your mother, al wazizi waze, wala nehene. Which was way more offensive than the mother's mouth. I don't know if you've ever had a grown man slap his tongue and then try to put that wet hand in your mouth. I was like, dude, get back. What are you doing, man? Back off. How are they laughing the most at this? They've seen it. They've seen it. That's right. Oh, they're doing their taxes. in the middle of the show this motherfucker was taking meetings <laughs> anytime you do this you're doing tag I don't know, man. I'm not used to that type of shit talking, you know, like when I was in Beirut. I'll get back to this, man. I like having fun and being in the moment, but some people are looking at me like, I paid for this chicken. 
I'll give you the show. I'll give you the show you signed up for. Because, I, dude, I live in L.A. right now, Hollywood. And Hollywood's not glamorous. People think there's, like, George Clooney's walking around. He ain't walking around. It's a shithole. There's crazy people. There's homeless people. There's just, it's it's insane. Like, there's crazy people. All, and it, they're good at talking shit to their profession. You don't give them money, dude. With meth mouth and the jaws going. And you don't even, is there words coming out? Is he talking or is he not talking? They're just good. There's a guy lives on my block. He's so good at talking shit that I look forward to walking by him to see what he has for the day. Dude, I walked by him. <laughs> I walked by him the other day. He just goes, Hey, where the fuck you going, you Iraqi wizard looking motherfucker? <laughs> How am I supposed to get mad at him looking like this? <laughs> Dude, I had to just take that shit. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna repeat that for some of you guys that didn't laugh. Iraqi wizard looking one. That's a, I don't care where you're from, Canada, California, dude. Iraqi wizard looking one. But that's a hilarious reference. For someone to come up with that on the fly, that's good. And he's always good. Dude, he's another one. I was in a rush to get to, I forget where I was going, but I was in a hurry. And you never look cool when you're like flustered and you're in a hurry, right? And homeboy saw me. I saw him see me. I'm like, shit, he's gonna say something. And he did, and he was fucked up on some drugs or something. He was way slower than he normally was. He was like on the wall, he was like, hey man. Slow the fuck down. Where the hell you headed anyway? To conduct the orchestra? <laughs> He said to conduct, where is he getting these references, man? <laughs> to conduct, or you know how funny, I was like, I thought I got the joke too. I'm like, oh dude, that's brilliant. He's saying the orchestra is 30 or 40 people. They're all waiting for me. That's why I'm in a rush. <laughs> that's why I don't the jump once. <laughs> I didn't get the full magnitude of this joke until about 10 hours later. I'm about to go to bed. I'm brushing my teeth. I'm in the mirror. And I'm looking at my... <laughs> I look like every orchestra conductor. He's so good. Where is he? You know the guy I'm talking about, dude. The orchestra. This... He's good. I look just like that. This... By the way, biggest bullshit job in the history of jobs. This guy. You don't do the band's been playing their instrument for 30 years. You need this guy. Like if he wasn't there, the violin guy back. Like, I don't know what to do. You don't fucking need him. Oh shit. I'm so sorry, dude. I didn't mean to. It's a good thing you're not a sea turtle. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean. I didn't mean. To, I didn't mean to hit you. I'm just. I can't like. Once I touch the thing, I'm like, I can't touch it and then put it back in my drink, like the top of it. I'm like a germaphobe. Like, I'll eat ass, but like, you know. Isn't that weird? I'll, fucking, I'll eat some ass. But then later on, I'll be like, is that my drink or your drink? <laughs> same girl, same exact girl. What is, what is that one? <laughs> Never understood. Never understood. By the way, um, I, I know a lot of you guys are having a good time and stuff like that. And like I said, it's my first time at this club. I'd love to come back and have you guys come out uh, if you enjoyed the show. And so, uh, thank you. And some of you guys, some are not. I can just see it. And I know I'm, I, I hate to keep mentioning it, but there are some people that are like, what is this? <laughs> Thanks for what? My oh, she wants to. Dude, I'm no, I'm no, dude, trust me, I'm a scumbag. Thank you, though. You don't want, dude, I'm like, I'm such a, like, I've been trying to be better, bro. I'm telling you right now, like, three years ago, I would have been in the sack with all two of you. I got good, dude, like, I'm a scumbag, dude. I used to, but, I mean, not like that. I'd be mainly interested in her, but, you know, I wouldn't mind if you were in the closet somewhere. So, you know. Well, I'll tell you, I'm a scumbag, so. Like, I've, this is, I'll lose, if I didn't lose you already. 
<laughs> this is for the women. I've slept with a girl before. I woke up in the morning. The girl's been there, and I've had to take her to Starbucks just to get her name because they write that shit. <laughs> That's the kind of guy you're doing. You order first, babe. You go ahead. Go order. <laughs> Michelle. Scumbag. Scumbag. I'm trying to be better. That's why this, like, last 2020, and I've, you know, I've been I'm growing as a human being and as an adult. I don't think you guys know much about me yet, um, other than a failed attempt to do a poem. <laughs> I'm trying to become a little bit more, you know, well-rounded as a human being, be nicer to people, you know, realize people's circumstances and situations and that, and I think that's part of growing up, you know? Like, I tried to donate my hair. That was something recently I tried to do. I was like, oh, this, I'll get back. Or maybe, I've had long hair for a while. You know, locks of love, right? No, but they make wigs for kids and stuff like that. So I call them up, I go, what's the process? You know, I'd like to donate my hair. And the guy goes, no worries, send us a picture. We'll get the process started. So I sent him a picture. The guy calls me back like 20 minutes later and he's like, Hey man, these kids have it bad enough. You think they want gray hair? <laughs> you got me. Yeah, they can't dye it, dude. That's the thing. They don't take dyed hair, you know? So that's a problem, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you didn't like, like, this is it, man. This is my dream job, and I'd get to do it. I, I'm not from here, man. I was born in Iran, you know? Like, I was. Like, yeah, thank you. I was born in, um, and I'm very proud of that. You know, I know there's a negative stigma attached to being Middle Eastern in you know some countries and stuff like that. But I'm very proud, and uh, it's so funny. It used to bother me when I was a kid when people would treat me differently when they found out I was Middle Eastern. Now I have fun with that shit. Um, I have, if, you, if I see you even remotely judging me for who I am, I'll play it up. <laughs> October 13th. <laughs> a date, bro. I have no idea what's going to happen on October 13th. All I know is that, that guy's going to be shitting his pants. It could be any date. It could be any, If that guy walked up to you, Dean, and just went, November 5th, you'd probably be like, what the fuck is going to happen on November 7th? It's fun. You can do it. Kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know, man. I love it. I love uh, that I was born there. I was born there. I came to the States when I was five years old. Five, straight from Iran to Southern California. No English, no English. <laughs> my mom, no English. I learned how to speak English by mimicking the kids in my neighborhood. I'd watch them talk. I had a Mexican accent for the first three years. <laughs> and they'd come on, mom, let's go to the park, fool. <laughs> Take me to the fucking park, dog. <laughs> you gotta meet my friends and shit, puta. I was a gangbanger. <laughs> Ruthless, bro. So I'm glad we're here. I mean, I'm, I'm in the States. I keep thinking I'm in the States. I'm glad that I get to do this, man, because it's really, really cool that I get to say what I want. That's why I use my full expression. I curse. I do whatever. I mean, it's all words, you know, if you get offended by that. You're an idiot. <laughs> it's just words. Stupid words, you know? And I just like to say stuff because I know that in my alternate universe, I would have been in Iran. I couldn't do nothing. You don't want to be able to do stand-up. You can't do this. You can't talk freely like, you know, hey, look at this guy. <laughs> Some guy would just stand up in the back, cut off his hand! <laughs> and, you know, like, so this is great. Man. Like, what would I be doing? I've thought about that, you know? I thought, what would I be doing if I lived in Iran still? Like, what? I'd still want to perform. I know me. You know, what could you do? Like, I just thought I'd be like some shitty motivational speaker. <laughs> Confidence. <laughs> Reliability. <laughs> Work ethic. <laughs> Resilient. <laughs> Never give up. <laughs> These are the five rules of successful. <laughs> Reliability, work ethic, relentless, never give up. You can make it. You can make it. You can maybe make it. You can make it. You can make it. Can make it. Right? I feel like I'd be great at that. Or a singer. I think I'd be good. 
So it's a blessing, bro. I love this. And I'm not good at anything else, man. You don't want me in the workplace, trust me. And I was a waiter. I was a waiter. I tried that shit. I was horrible. Man, I was a good for my friends and stuff, but like a horrible for the business. You know? I worked at Olive Garden, as a matter of fact. I was a waiter there. By the way, when I worked at Olive Garden, if you sat at my table and you ordered calamari, I ate a couple on the way here. And the sauce and everything. You know. When you're here, your family, I share with my family. All of that was crazy. I got fired from every job I did. Every job I did, I got fired from. I got fired from Olive Garden because there's a, this manager, Carol, assistant manager, alcoholic. Nobody liked Carol. She was so mean. She'd come in. She'd come in. Go, go, go. No, no, no. Yelled at everyone. She'd yell at the kitchen staff. And they were my buddies, you know. The kids. We had three Arturos in the kitchen. They were all on it. Dude. One guy was the front line. He had a ponytail. He'd hit on you. Girl, male. He didn't give it. Come on, baby. Little pervert. I liked him. He was cool. Really good. He was really efficient. He cooked like five things at once. There's Arturo who made soup in the back. And he was, gick, 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 gick. And he was so. F- he'd do like drugs and just fucking make it the soup. And he made it so fast, dude. He made like a bunch of soup, you know. Moscato soup, minestrone soup, all the soups, whatever. And he would clean in between. He would. Cl- he was dope, dude. He would clean in between. That's how fucked up, you know, when you do math. I don't know if you guys know speed. You'll want to clean in between so he'd be cooking and in the middle of like a busy shift he'd start cleaning the soot on the with bleach he'd spray it and get in his eye he'd be like, oh, ship. and one time carol came in and goes arturo where's the fucking food for table number seven whatever it was she yelled about and he's like it's coming he's coming he's up on a ladder washing the thing and the bleach is going in his eyes you know and he, and he goes he's coming he's coming you go 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 and she goes to leave out of the double doors and she leaves out the double doors and and Arturo thinks that she's out of earshot, so he goes, fucking bitch. <laughs> the late Carol, she hears, she runs back and she goes, what the fuck did you say to me, Arturo? And he goes, bleach, bleach. <laughs> now that joke is way funnier in LA. <laughs> Um, but that kitchen was so great and then the reason I got fired was because Carol was in there and she was helping out she would always come in when we were like short staff but she would like hurt it more than you know she'd waste because we have a little system back there everyone knows what they're doing but she was coming to expedite food which means putting the food from the, the, the window to the trays and getting ready for tables you know with the tickets and she's doing that and she's yelling at everybody and everyone's getting like all pissed off I'm just back there eating freaking breadsticks like <laughs> watching the whole thing go down and I'm like dude I can't I gotta I can't I gotta do something for the house you know so I go and grab a big ass piece of garnish lettuce you know those lettuce pieces that they put on a plate and I go up and I go behind her and I put it on top of her hairnet and I step back and everyone's just cracking up and they're like what the hell does Carol have on her head and everyone's laughing and she can't figure it out she says what what is it what and everyone's laughing and then I just <laughs> I had to up the ante because everyone was cracking up and she wasn't getting it. And I was sitting back there and then finally I go, Carol. <laughs> she goes, what? And I go, Carol. And she goes, what? And I go, I need a head of lettuce right now. <laughs> and she turns and the lettuce falls down. And she goes, Amir, you're fired. <laughs> and I go, I <laughs> And I left, I got canned, dude. But I had to, this is the messed up part, I had to come back to get actually fired, like from the general manager. This guy Priyash, Indian dude. Um, and he was so cool, he liked me so much and that was the worst part, because I felt like I let down my dad or something. You know, he was like, Amir, why did you do what? Why did you do that? Why are you fucking, are you fucking stupid? When he would get mad, his voice would shoot up. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? It's a health code violation. I'm trying to lose my job. Why would you do that? I have to fire you, Amir. I like you. I do not like you. But I have to fire you. He was so cool because he would like tell me his story and it was kind of inspiring. He was always in such a good mood. You know, he was the general manager of an Olive Garden. And he was so proud. I don't know. I grew up in Calcutta. I slept in shit. 
and then I made my way, I made, I made my way. I made my way from India, so I come here. Beautiful land of lush. And I became the general manager of the Garden of Olives. <laughs> he jerks it up so much. But you had to love him, dude. He was awesome. Free ash. But when he was firing me, man, he was freaking hated. Why did you do that, motherfucker? You had five tables. Five tables over here. You just left with the five tables. And I saw you eating the mints, motherfucker. You are eating me. Yeah, those little green mints are so good. I would eat him all the time and he would see me on the camera, but he never said nothing. He like just kept it up here and then he just let it out. He was like, you're eating the mints, motherfucker. Those are for the customer, you're eating the mints. I'll see on the camera, you're eating the mints. They're so good, the little green ones. You know, and these mints are so good. After three, instant diarrhea. It's, I don't know, x lax man, I don't know what it is, but they're just loose in a stew. I don't know. It's been a good month, too. This month's been great. Last month sucked. Last month was crazy. I just had to get my dog a $7,200 surgery. Yeah, fake tits ain't cheap. <laughs> Big old little fake titties on that motherfucker. Y'all never seen little weenie dog with some titties on that bitch? Weenie dog leg about that big. He dragging titties on the motherfucking concrete, y'all. Oh, he likes black comedy. I got you, dog. Got him to laugh. I don't laugh at that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you guys have been a fantastic crowd, man. My dog didn't get fake tits. He's a wiener dog, so he ruptured a disc in his neck. It's super sad, yeah. 7,200. And I knew it was going to be expensive, dude. I knew it was going to be expensive because we went to the regular vet, and that guy's like, I can't help you. You got to go to a neurologist. I was like, I didn't even know a dog had a neurologist. <laughs> I was so mad. I always, I, that was my first clue it was going to be expensive. Right? Then he goes, it's in Newport Beach. I go, Add two grand to whatever you're doing in Newport Beach. That's the pricey part of California. Right? That was my second clue was going to be expensive. Third clue was going to be expensive. I get to the neurologist's office. This guy's got a saltwater fish tank from there. <laughs> With exotic fish I've never seen in my life. I don't know what these fish are, but I know I'm paying for their food. <laughs> Is that a shark? Is that a full-size shark? <laughs> How much does a baby seal cost? How much does a seal go for? <laughs> I'm having these thoughts in the waiting room, you know? And, then, and my dog is next to me, the little doogie's next to me with his little crooked neck. Poor guy, yeah, he was in a lot of pain too. I'm like, shit, man, he's my baby, dude. I have him 15 years, you know? And so um, they take us into the doctor's office very quickly. And the doctor comes in right away with his little clipboard, doesn't even look at me. Looks right at Doogie, he's like, yep, seen it a million times, we're gonna have to get him right into surgery and it's gonna cost you right around $7,200. <laughs> that's when he hit me with the price, bro. He, that's when I met him, he did <laughs> And I didn't even know I had this sound in my body, dude. I go, <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of money, dude. And I started to start rationalize. I'm like, okay, maybe this is like the premium package. <laughs> you know, there's other lower packages coming. <laughs> He's just trying to upsell me right now. I've been to the car wash. I know how they do it. In the States, you go to the car wash, they're always trying to, you have to get the premium. The premium, the premium is the best one. The premium have everything, the wines. Have the special wines. If it's everything. If you don't get it, I don't know what's gonna happen to your car. Yeah, the, the premium package have everything. Have it the wax, have it, have it the guacamole for the tires. Oh my life. Guacamole for the tires, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> so I'm thinking that's what's happening, right? I'm thinking, oh, this guy's trying to upcharge me or whatever. And then I sit, I'm sitting there and he's not giving me nothing else, dude. There's no other options coming. So we're like at a standstill. And then I just start going, well, what about? What about? I start coaxing other options. And my whole time in my head, I'm playing all the YouTube videos of dogs with three legs. I've seen having a blast. <laughs> what about? <laughs> Finally, he goes, what are you talking about? And then I go, what are you talking about? 
And then it gets weird, Dean. It gets awkward and weird. We're just standing looking at each other. I'm like, why the hell is it getting so awkward and weird in here? And it hits me. I'm like, oh my, I saw it in his eyes. I go, oh my God, he thinks I'm saying, what about putting him down? That's what he was thinking. You know, when you can see what someone's thinking. And one thing you guys need to know about me, I don't know if you've noticed it already, but I could never pass up an opportunity <laughs> to make an awkward situation. <laughs> so instead of acknowledge what's happening like an adult would, you know, like, no, 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 I didn't do that, dude. I just kept eye contact with this guy. <laughs> and then I go, make it look like an accident. <laughs> I thought he would laugh like you did, Dean. He didn't laugh. There's a time and a place for jokes, and there's not at the fucking neurologist's office. I look crazy, dude. I looked crazy. Well, we got Doogie fake. Doogie's good now. He's. It was so sick. Like I said, he's my baby, man. I had to do it, you know? It's like, you think, like, oh, yeah, I just put him down or whatever. And you can't. It's like they become part of your family. And the dude, man, and he, he's good now. His like back legs weren't working at all. Like when I took him in. Now, he, like when he gets tired a little bit, like they'll just they'll go like. <laughs> it's so cute. It's it, I call my little stripper. He's like, hey, walk around. <laughs> Sometimes when I have a treat, if he's like that, I'll go shake it, shake it. And I'll go. And I'll go. <laughs> it's so weird. Is it sick? I got a sickness. <laughs> but he's so cute. He's the cutest dog in the world, man. We cuddle every night. He sleeps with me right here, man. Every morning I wake up, I go, Good morning, Doogie. How you doing this morning? Are you still tired? You can't be tired. You were sleeping all night. You guys can judge the voice all you want. I don't give a fuck. Judge If you don't change your voice when you talk to a dog or a baby, you're a serial killer. Come on. You can't be, hey, dog, how you doing this afternoon? You're murdering hookers. You have to be like, no, 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 no. That's how I talk to him, you know? He's so cute. Sometimes he'll sleep on his back with his little arms, with his little bald belly. He's got this bald belly. If I catch him like that in the middle of the night on his back, I'll just gently, like, I'll wake up and I'll gently poke his stomach and I'll just go, belly button. <laughs> he'll wake up and I go, it's not the morning yet. Go back to bed, Doogie. It was a false alarm. I'll wake you up when it's time. <laughs> I talk to him how I think he would talk. You know what I mean? He's little. I want to talk to him how I think he would. And I've had that thought. Most dog owners have had that thought. Like, I wish my dog could talk. Right? But immediately after that thought, I have the thought of he's too needy. He's too... If Doogie could talk, and he had a cell phone, I'd leave the house for five minutes. I'd check my voicemail. It'd be like, you have 30 new voices. <laughs> Boop! Hey, what's going on? It's me, Doogie. <laughs> Listen, I know you said we're going for a walk. I just kind of want to touch base. <laughs> See what time you were thinking. Go ahead and give me a call back. <laughs> I'm at home. <laughs> Boop! Hey, it's me again. <laughs> Listen, have you seen my red ball? <laughs> yeah, you know the one we take to the park, can't seem to find the... Anyway, it's no big deal, call me when you can. <laughs> Boop! <laughs> the Amazon packages are here. <laughs> Boop! <laughs> hey, yo, uh, you're not gonna wanna go in the living room. <laughs> I couldn't hold it. <laughs> Boop! I found the ball! Fuck yeah! It was under the bed. Can you believe this? Like, I checked everywhere. I went to the couch. I went under the couch. It was under the couch. So I went to the bedroom. I was looking all over the bedroom. And I was like, well, why don't I just check under the bed? And then I checked under the bed. It was right there. Do you think I kicked it or you kicked it? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, call me. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Change my fucking food. I've been eating the same shit for seven years. 
Is this all they have? <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's me, Doogie. <laughs> hey, you guys were phenomenal, man. Thank you very much.